Hi guys and welcome back to a brand new masterclass tutorial. Today we're going to be going over Point Color, a brand new tool found inside Lightroom Classic. And I'm going to start right now. So, Point Color is one of several brand new tools brought to the latest Lightroom Classic update, that is 13.0. So, if you don't see Point Color available or just can't find it within your Lightroom, make sure to go in update your Lightroom Classic to the latest version to follow along with this video. Now this is going to be a masterclass tutorial going over everything that you need to know to start using Point Color in your editing workflow. So it's going to be slightly longer than my traditional video. So go to the timestamps that you can see available here to skip to the part that will help you out most. So let's go ahead and jump onto Lightroom Classic and start using Point Color. So we've got these three colors here and we've got a color shift between light to dark and we've got green, blue and purple. Now let's say we just wanted to change that center color in the middle. So this blue that you can see here. Well, what we traditionally do before we go ahead and use point color is we go over to the color mixer tool and you can see it's broken down into eight different color bands. What I'd do is go to the blue here and if I wanted to make it more magenta, I'd shift it over towards the right. And if I wanted to make it look more teal, I'd shift it towards the left. But the problem is, as you can see, it's changing all of the colors within that color band. So including the dark color as well as the bright color. Now you may want that, but in most cases, especially when it comes to my color grading, I don't want that. So what I end up doing is masking the area out and then change going into the color mixer, changing it, and it, it's a long process. So what the point color does is it streams line that by allowing you to select a specific hue as well as saturation and luminance value. So what we're gonna do, instead of using the color mixer at all, we're gonna go over, as you can see, it's actually very similar. We've got over to the area where you can see it now says point color. So to go ahead and start using point color, all you'll need to do is go to this little eyedropper tool here, click on it, and then select the color that you want targeting. I'm gonna go ahead and select this middle blue here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it like so. So now it's popped up, you can see we can now select different parts of this image. So the point color is split into two different sections. How you can change the color, and at the bottom here, how you can target that color. So the most handiest button of all is this button right at the bottom that says visualize range. To select the color, all you need to do is go ahead and turn it on. What this will do is it will, apart from the one color we're targeting, it will change all the others to black and white. So you can see we're now just selecting the tonal value in the middle and specifically the one in the blue in the middle here. So what we're going to do is to narrow that range, we can go to our hue, saturation, and luminance range, and you will see we've got this tolerance slider here. You've also got right at the top here, you've got range. If you increase this range, you are expanding how much color you are targeting, where if you decrease this range, you're reducing the amount of tonal range within your photo. Now, what I'm gonna do is reduce that down all the way to zero. You can also see in this top color square here, what's it doing? We're increasing it, and then we can also decrease it. But you can be a lot more specific if you go into the hue, saturation, and luminance range. So, so we've got these toggles on the left and right. If we move that toggle to the left and bring it right, we're reducing the range. And as you can see, if we reduce it far enough, we're now removing that color found on the right-hand side. And again, if we do the same on the left, we bring that closer, we're reducing that color found on the right-hand side. And it's the same with our saturation value. We can reduce that all the way, keep going. And you can see now that one that was originally selected is no longer selected. And it's the same with the saturation on the right. We can again reduce that down and we'll do the same with our luminance value. And you can see now the only color that you can visually see is that center blue one. So now let's go ahead and change that color. So this is how you can target it. At the top here, you've got your hue shift, saturation shift, luminance shift, and this bar right at the top is your before and after. So for example, if we wanted to change the color of that, we'll go to our hue, we can make it look a little bit more purple. So for example now, and you can see the before and after, the original color and the after color. And if we go ahead and slide it to the left, we're now making it a little bit more teal. And then what we can do is go to our saturation shift. 
we can desaturate it if we like, or we can increase the saturation, and it's the same with luminance. We can make that look brighter, or we can make that look darker. And to then go back to the, or revert back to the normal, what we can do is turn off visualize range. So now what we can do, you can really see how we're just targeting that one center color and not affecting the rest of the others, which is amazing. So we could completely reduce all the color pretty much entirely. Or for example, we can make it really saturated. As you can see, you can be really customizable on how you can do that as well is you're not just stuck using just one color, you can add them up and layer this particular effect again and again and again. So for example, you've got this little box here. This is referencing the color before and after, but let's say we want to select a new color. Let's say we want to select this green. You can see we've now got two available and you can go through the same process going over and over again until you are happy with the result. So that's what it does in practice. Let's go and actually apply it to a photo. So what we're gonna do, go from our Lightroom and we're gonna go ahead and open up photo two. And it's a beautiful photo I took very recently when I went to the Yorkshire Dales with an EF 500 mil. And if you're interested, I'll make sure to place the lens review in the link in the description. So in this video, what I want to do is make the red squirrel a lot more red. Now, as you can see, I've already gone into the color mix at all and I've changed a few values. I can actually show you the before and after, but what's annoying is the background is a very similar color to the red squirrel. Now, normally what I'd do is I'd actually create a mask, mask the red squirrel out, and then go into the color mixer tool. But in today's video, all we need to do is use the point color tool. So let's drop out of color mixer, and let's go ahead and open up point color. So to firstly, we wanna select the color we want to change. So I'm gonna go to my eyedropper tool, I'm gonna go ahead and just select the red squirrel here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And you can see we've now opened up with this drop down. So what I'm gonna do is firstly go over to visualize range, go ahead and turn that on. And you can see that we've actually selected a lot of the background. Now the background seems to have a lot of yellow in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my range here. I'm gonna drop that range down to around 20%, I think in this example. Then what I want to do is remove a lot of that yellow. So we can go to my hue range here. Now the yellow is found on the right hand side of this photo. So what I'm gonna do is go to that slider. I'm gonna bring that over to the left. And as you can see, we are now removing a lot of that yellow from the background. So we're not targeting that photo in the end result. And what I might do is actually open up the slider here so we're targeting a little bit more of that magenta found a lot more in the red squirrel. So what I'm gonna do is maybe open it up a little bit more and then we're gonna target a little bit more of that. So we are targeting predominantly most of that red squirrel there. Now, obviously the red squirrel has a little bit more saturation value. So what I'm gonna do is open up that saturation value here and bringing it outwards a little bit. So we're selecting this part of the red squirrel, which you can see wasn't originally targeted. So we're narrowing the value within the hue, but we're opening up that value within our saturation range. And it's the same with our luminance range. You can see that this section here isn't being targeted. So what I'm gonna do is go to my luminance range here. I'm gonna go ahead and increase that all the way. And I'll probably do it as well as brightening it. So we're actually increasing that range there. And what I might do Let's just increase that like so. So as you can see, most of the red squirrel now is completely covered. So once you're happy with the overall values that you've actually, so we can select that color, what we're gonna do now is go to our hue shift. I'm gonna bring that over slightly to the left. So we're making it a little bit more magenta. You can see with our color square here, what we're doing to the color. Again, with our color square here before and after. What I'm gonna do is probably make that a little bit more saturated, but not by much, probably around about 5% there. Uh, oh, not 30%, 5%. And then I'm gonna go to my luminance range here and I'm gonna drop that down, making him a little bit darker, I think, but not by that much, probably by around about minus 10 there. I'll probably do a little bit more, so I'll probably go to my hue shift again, make it maybe a little bit more magenta, going to minus 15 instead of minus 10. So you can see the before here, and then we've got the after. And to see what it looks like in the overall end result, what we can do is go to our visualize range and go ahead and turn that off. So you can now see what it looks like in the final result. Now I'd also like to affect the green part as well. So to do that, again, all we need to do is go to our eyedropper tool. I'm gonna go ahead and select the green this time. So you can see we've made a new swatch. Then I'm gonna go again, go back down to visualize range. So we're only selecting, you can see we're selecting that green there. I'm pretty happy with the overall selection, although I might actually open it up a little bit more. So we're targeting a little bit more of this green, this kind of yellowy green you can see in the top section here. And what I'll do is I wanna make this more green. So I'm gonna to go to my hue shift, 
to change the color. I'm gonna make it a little bit more of a brighter, more saturated green. So I'm gonna go for something like so. So we're gonna increase the hue shift of 29. Then I'm gonna go to the saturation shift here. I'm gonna bring that up a little bit, probably around about 10% there, but not, my, my, not by much. And then I'm gonna go to my luminance range here. I'm gonna drop that down and make that a little bit darker. And you can see it's becoming a little bit blotchy at the top here. So what I'll do is actually go to my range here. I'm gonna go ahead and increase that range a little bit to make it a little bit more of a softer transition between non-green and green there. And then all I need to do is go back to visualize range and turn that on. And as you can see, I'm actually really happy with the overall result. So what we can see, we've actually targeted the red part of the red squirrel and also the green part. Now, you can see there's a little bit of a difference there. So what you probably, I, what I would do is go to our color mixer tool and probably adapt that again, because again, you can use it in conjunction with other tools found within your photo. And what I could do is show you the before, and then I can show you the after, and you can see you can really target it. Now, another thing that's really nice about the point color, it's not just available on the right-hand side panels, it's also available in the masking panel as well. So let's say we've got this orange here and we're not quite happy with it. Well, firstly, you can right-click on that and you can go ahead and delete swatch or delete all swatches, but let's say we just want to really specific target that red squirrel. Then what I would do is go over to our masking panel here, I would go ahead, as you can see, I've already made a mask of that red squirrel. If we drop down, you can see we've got the point color in our masking panel. So again, you can go to that, you can go ahead and select it, and you can now see that we're just targeting with inside that mask, we can then target a specific color. So again, I'd probably go through the same range. So go to visualize range. Now you can see we're just targeting that red squirrel. So what I would do now is I would probably increase that range there a little bit. I might go to the drop down so we can see our range. I'd probably increase our range to a, covering a little bit more of that yellow, maybe a little bit more of that magenta, increase the saturation range. So we're affecting more of that red squirrel. And then again, the same with our luminance range. So probably increase that as well. Then I want to make it a little bit more of a magenta color. So I'd take our hue shift over here, Slide that over, I think I chose minus 15 in our last example, so I'll do the same number here. I increased it by 5% in saturation, and then I actually darkened it ever so slightly. I'll probably darken it by minus 10. So if you're not happy with the overall image and you just wanna target a specific area, what I recommend doing is using the point color inside the masking panel. So yeah, an incredibly handy tool if you wanna target a specific color, as well as you can use it in conjunction with masks, which just opens up your possibilities of how you can color grade. And again, what's really nice is you can use multiple. So again, you can go ahead and select another color, and then you can go ahead and select another color. You can add as many colors as you want. So to be honest with you, I actually think this is now better than the color mix at all, because instead of using those eight color bands, you can basically select the exact color you want, within a certain range, as well as the saturation and luminance range, and then color grade it to your own heart's desire. An amazing tool, and I love using it, and hopefully you do too, with inside your editing workflow. Here is the before, and here is the after. Brilliant, and there we go guys. So there is my masterclass tutorial about how you can use the new point color tool. An incredibly handy tool if you wanna target a specific hue, but at a certain saturation and luminance value. I could really see this being handy for portrait or fashion photographers that want to target a specific hue without affecting the rest of the photo, or maybe even landscape or wildlife photographers. Like for example, my red squirrel, I'm able to target the red squirrel without necessarily creating a mask of it. But what's also really handy is you can also use it in conjunction with masks as well. So you can create multi-level layers inside Lightroom Classic to target specific areas of your photo as well as certain hues at tonal value. So yeah, this is an incredibly handy tool to really control your colors inside your photos. Now, of course, if you'd like to learn more about Lightroom Classic, go ahead and go to my masterclass tutorial, which I go over everything that you need to know to start using Lightroom Classic in a professional way, where we'll go over the basics panel, tone curve, calibration tool, and even learn how to do color grading. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.